I have a funny feeling I should not touch this. And I'm not touching this either because I have a feeling that maybe I would break or blow something up. And what's going on today? Is there a gemstone under? Can I just... Remember when you said that we've never had anything living yet? No, really? So I don't know what's going on here today. I guess there's a few people in this room that do, but we're gonna call Christopher in and he's gonna tell me what I am allowed to touch here. I have a funny feeling that I am, I gotta be careful. Hello. You're back. I'm back. What'd you bring? Well, uh, something, something, something good this isn't as always. No damage to my mouth. Like I can't, I've had braces three times. I don't want any, nothing's gonna fly up and hit me in the face, right? Just as long as you don't try to bite anything. So we're good. Yeah, we should be good. All right, open it up. Well, it's not an unboxing today. Today it's going to be an unveiling. <gasps> there we go. Holy guacamole, that's, Pretty cool. So what do we have today? Lady Cotite. Yes. All right, guys, this is a super cool kind of tourmaline. I am guessing that this is a light source to backlight. Yes. All right, yes, can we turn it, it on? We can. Can I can I snap? Three, two, one. All right. That's a lot better. Guys, does this look kind of creepy? <laughs> <laughs> this is a type of tourmaline. Type of tourmaline. Named after Richard T. Lidicote. The president of GIA. You can see there's like a, a banding in that triangular shape. That's what the stone is known for. You know, I was mm. expecting something to blow up. No. <laughs> I was Not really nervous with the cord. Not unless you that too much. So with uh, Lidicotite, tourmaline is a large group. True. And uh, the ones that we're probably most familiar with would be uh, Elbaite, which is most of your jewelry uh, tourmalines. Lidi uh, the Shoral, in, in which is used a lot. And Dicolite is a variety of Elbaite. You've got Dravite, which is oftentimes your chrome tourmaline. And Kay. then your more uh, rare types are the Lidicotite and Uvite. Yes. What you have is this stone is actually almost chemically identical to an Elbaite. The mm -hmm. only difference is uh, you have a calcium substituting for sodium. Elbaite has sodium, Lidicotite has calcium, and and there's also another type called floor lidocotite, which these are just lidocotites, but the floor lidocotite, also at the end of the uh, formula, you have uh, four oxygen and hydrogen, mo hydrogen molecules, fluorine substitutes for one of those, then you get floor lidocotite. All right, y'all, I want you to pay attention right here. So you see that this banding and this mm -hmm. color, that is all natural. That I just think is fascinating, that it comes out of the ground and literally the only thing that you have to do is just slice it very thin so that the light is able to pass through the stone. Would you set this in jewelry? Because I'm sure I actually really, would. really want to make a bolo tie out of one of these. <laughs> where, where, what's your, talk about your bolo tie uh, today. Amylite uh, today, because a lot of colors in amylite Maybe as well. Maybe we could do an episode about Christopher bullet guys. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of those. What is your favorite fact about the stone? One of my favorite things about it, of course, has got to be the formation. In addition to the triangles, you also get what's kind of like a star formation, if you can see it mm -hmm. there. Tourmaline has kind of been uh, referred to as, as uh, nature's garbage can. It'll, it'll take anything, it'll use anything, it'll recycle anything. So a lot of the color that you're seeing here comes from a charge transfer, basically sharing of an electron between um, iron and titanium. That's what's generating most of the green color in these. Most of the pink is uh, being generated by manganese. And you can see, especially if you look on this side, you can see where we had differing amounts as the crystal group. These are all one crystal. And these oh, are and different just... different layers of it so sliced. It... So you can see how it uses up certain elements and how the crystal structure changes. You don't really see, you, you don't see much of the triangular form here, but you start seeing it here. Mm -hmm. It starts becoming very and distinct here. here. it's extremely. Exactly. So guys, think about, you know, Elizabeth and I have had Toblerones on mm -hmm. this channel quite a bit. You know how they're sliced, they're in, it's in a long prism mm -hmm. and you slice it. That's basically what happened with this piece right here. It was probably in a longer prism and it was, but imagine if Slice you had a thin. Toblerone that you could get that on one end was dark chocolate and the dark chocolate transitioned into almonds and then Rice Krispies with milk chocolate and then peppermint with white chocolate. I don't like white chocolate, but, but that's what you would have yeah. in, in a tourmaline crystal a lot of the time because the chemistry changes uh, as the trace elements that are used up and, and done. With the manganese, you can see just a little pink peeking out here. You get to this part of the crystal and the crystal yeah, actually came in, but that. the triangle actually poked out 
from the crystal in this one, so you can see the termination of the triangle in a different color from the rest of the triangle uh, through the middle part of it. And you even start getting a little blue towards the tip. So this would have been towards the base, and typically the base is gonna be more flat. Okay. The crystal's going to be prismatic and grow upwards with striations all along the outside, and all the outer edges of these are natural. Some people may be watching and they are familiar with watermelon tourmaline. Tell mm -hmm. us the difference between the two. So watermelon tourmaline is typically an L-bite tourmaline, okay. and you have a similar situation where uh, the uh, growth of the crystal uh, has used up different elements, but it's more of a inner outer sort of situation. Uh, with this one, you get just a slightly different growth pattern, and again, you've got that uh, calcium instead of the sodium, so you're seeing a different, uh, you still have the same crystal structure, but you're seeing a different uh, effect to the growth there. You know, we've talked about I think, home decor on this channel a few mm -hmm. times. How big do these pieces come? Is there a way I could get you know, like a big piece and frame yeah. it? I mean, what have you seen? Absolutely. Uh, you've uh, The largest piece I've seen maybe would have been about this large. It's probably pretty light because it's very thin. Well, I mean, it, it weigh about as much as like a fine china plate. They do make excellent uh, ornamental display pieces. Um, you don't see them in jewelry as much. They are typically fairly thin. This is one of the thicker pieces. But uh, one of the other things is you'll notice the cracks in, in a lot of these. A lot of the times, especially for larger pieces, it's not a common for them to have had uh, repairs done. This is its a great mm -hmm. historical uh, significance in the business. It's absolutely beautiful, great mm -hmm. colors. We can learn a lot. Um, and the world of tourmaline is never ending. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things. Tourmaline, uh, like several other mineral specimens like calcite and fluorite come mm -hmm. to mind, you could make a collection of nothing but liticotite oh, for sure. and not unless you were going for like you know the repeated pieces you have so much variety in it you could have a thousand pieces and have an incredible variety throughout your entire collection i'm a little overwhelmed here so <laughs> which one don't you want to get a closer don't look don't i want to get a closer look all right christopher okay i think my favorite piece i, re is I recommend going something with very good banding though as far as the banding goes then this is going to be the best one that we've got here because this one has an excellent excellent triangle to it and you've got all sorts of different colors there. watching today. I always love having other gem nerds and thank you to Christopher for uh, being be an expert guest. These videos are super fun to make but they always are um, a little bit brighter and more <laughs> colorful when we have a guest, pun intended. Like and subscribe as always but I think what you also should do is share the video. Share it on your Facebook. Share it mm -hmm. with your friends and you know we want to continue to bring the world of gemstones and jewelry to everyone, no matter what you're interested in. You're kind of a mineral geek. I definitely am a mineral geek. I'm a jewelry addict. And- Well, you keep trying to steal my jewelry. Christopher actually probably has better jewelry than I do. <laughs>